Hi, welcome back to Civil Engineering 305. So this time today we are going to continue talking about stresses, stress components on slant surfaces at various angles. I know you you kind of know the formula, uh, but many of you still have difficulties with normals and things like that. So we are going to sort out, especially finding the angles and all of that. So we are going to sort it out in a very systematic way. So watch out how this goes. Um, let's start by looking at our classic case. Our first one that we looked at, which was we had a big bar like this, right? And by the way, throughout our analysis, just to make sure we are all always talking about the same thing. This is the x direction, that's the y direction, okay? So that's what is going to happen. So we had some forces here, right? We were pulling on it. The total force was uh, P, like that, okay? And we wanted to find the stress here at some angle, okay? So that's what we are really interested in. So what we do is we draw a free body diagram of this piece. Okay, so I'm going to draw it kind of large so that we can see how this goes. So it's going to be like that. Right. And in fact, what we are going to do is we are going to be clever and we are only going to draw a free body diagram of this piece. Would you agree that if the force is P here, it will also be P on this face. So we have a very simple setup, looks like that. This face has force P. And based on our notation, the force per unit area here, by the way, thickness is like that. So the thickness is always T and this length is L. So the stress will be called sigma on this face. It will be called sigma in the minus x direction. Sorry, on the minus x face in the minus x direction. Can you see that? It is sigma minus x minus x. It so happens to be equal to sigma xx. Can you see that? Because the stress in this face is sigma x direction along the x. I mean, sigma x phase along the x direction. Remember, phase the force, right? Right? And sigma xx, sigma minus x minus x equal to sigma xx equal to P over LT. Clear? So, our first idea is to draw the normal. Always look at the nose and the angle that the nose makes with the x axis. That's theta. Right? And then there's always uh, questions about which way things have to go and so on. So the, the best idea for you to do is to draw a line like this and draw a line like that. Okay. So then it's pretty simple. This will be 90 minus theta. Then this will be theta. This will be 90 minus theta. That will be theta. That will be 90 minus theta. That will be theta. Right? It alternates between theta and 90 minus theta. It's obvious, right? So what happens? What is this angle? This angle is the same as this one. Can you, let me draw the color differently so you can see. This angle and this angle are the same. Right? And so that will be theta. Then you can see this angle and that angle are the same and that will be 90 minus theta. Is that obvious to you? So that's how you find the angles. So you just look at, a, you're basically looking for a shape that looks like that. So then this angle and that angle are the same. Okay. And if it is like this, then what happens is the angles will alternate. Okay. So if you remember that, you are done. But because I don't want to crowd this figure, I'm going to erase all of this. We are only going to leave these two like that 
okay there so this is our basic stuff and equilibrium will tell us so first item always force analysis equilibrium immediately tells us that the um let's see yeah so the net force on this phase let us call this a a will tell us that net force on a a will be equal to p in the x direction that's easy right there's nothing much to it so if 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 it is pulling with p this side it will be p that other side because if i just sum the forces along the x axis this is just saying summation of the force along the x axis is zero summation of the forces along the y axis is zero so by the way this is it for the physics of the problem okay rest of the stuff is mathematics so we already know what to do so our our point is we want to break it up into tangent and normal so we are going to yeah, i'm going to extend this thing like this i'm going to draw so this is called uh, fn this will be called ft this is tangent force this is normal force so immediately f ft let me write it in black i know i'm kind of repeating it because i want to make sure you understand f fn will be equal to p cos theta ft will be equal to p sin theta right then the area area of aa equals t times l over cos theta because this distance is l so this distance will be l over cos theta so our stress which will be called sigma n n can you see the notation will be by the way just to make sure you understand the arrow directions fn is like that ft is like that sorry like this okay so sigma nn will be uh, fn over a aa which is p over tl cos square theta tau n now we have to say which direction is t okay so in the book the way it is drawn is the t direction is given like that the tangent direction is given like that notice ft is pointing the other way so this will be called fn and this is a very critical thing minus t because that's the direction of the force will be equal to p over lt cos theta sin theta or if you want tau nt will be minus p over lt sin theta cos theta So what I mean? So sigma n n equal to sigma x x because p over t l is sigma x x cos square theta. So in the book they always refer to shear stresses as tau. So I'm using the same notation, but in reality you should either write sigma or tau n t equals minus sigma x x. sin theta cos theta okay so this is 